Welcome to the Black Educated Tea Podcast. I'm your host, Makita Marie, and today's topic, we are talking about anxiety. But before we get into that topic, as always, I definitely want to give you the tea about the tea before we get into the tea. So today I am drinking Simply Spearmint Leaf Tea. Um, it has a really minty taste. It does have a sweetness to me. And I think I say that about most teas that I drink, that it has a sweetness to it. Or whatever. I think my taste buds are just changing as I get older. Because for some people, the spearmint may be bitter. Um, be, you know, depending on how you like minty taste, uh, tasting things. So, But it is it does have a, a hint of sweetness to me. Um, very similar to peppermint tea. Um, so I'm just drinking something simple, which is the spearmint leaf tea. I like it. Um, and as always, I drink my coffee in the morning. And I'm a Starbucks drinker. Um, and man, they coffee has a lot of caffeine in it when I looked it up. Um, that should have been a push for me to stop, but I didn't. <laughs> when I looked it up and saw the amount of caffeine, I'm like, man, I shouldn't even be able to sleep at night. So the fact that I'm drinking coffee with that huge amount of caffeine in it, most of my, I'm not going to say most, all of my teas that I drink are caffeine free. So the Spearmint Leaf is um, a caffeine free tea. Um, it's really good. I like it. I actually added honey to it as well to even give it a more sweetness. Um, so, yeah, that's what I'm drinking today. Really good. So, I really want to get into this topic about anxiety. Um, I did a previous episode where I talked about depression. And now I want to just speak on anxiety. Um, because mental health is it's a serious issue that's affecting a lot of us, a lot of our families. And a lot of times we don't talk on it, you know. It's um, like the forbidden thing to talk about. Um, but um, fortunately enough, um, we are talking about it more. People are becoming more open to discussing it. And um, so that is a major plus. Um, and so for me, anxiety is something that I suffer from and have many years and I still do to this day and I first noticed my anxiety after I had my son which was eight years ago and I once I had him I had to have a cesarean and so they put me on pain meds I do not like medication at all um, but if I am in pain or I am sick I will take it um, as a last resort because I am just not a medicine person at all. So I was prescribed pain medication and um, I felt terrible. I felt so weird. Uh, I, my heart had started racing and um, although this medication or these pain meds were supposed to make me calm, I started to lose, I felt like I was losing control of my body. And so my heart started racing. I got really hot. I started sweating. I didn't know what was happening to me. And I didn't know then that I was suffering from anxiety. I just thought, okay, well, maybe it was, you know, the pain meds, which was a trigger. It was definitely a trigger at the time. But I just thought, okay, I just had my son. And so I just, you know, had these thoughts that, you know, my body is going through all these changes and, um, it's just trying to acclimate what is going on with my body. And then I just introduced it to these pain meds that I had never taken before. Um, so those were definitely triggers uh, for my anxiety. But then I started having panic attacks again. So that was really my first panic attack. Um, and then I started having them again. And I think my biggest panic attack was when I got my wisdom teeth pulled. And uh, I only got one removed. And I'm, you know, most people, when you go, you try to get them all knocked out. So you'll get all four removed. I only got one wisdom teeth removed. And I'm glad I did. Uh, because I actually wanted to do four, but it's like something in my mind was like, no, nah, you know, just work on one at a time or whatever. And I'm glad I did. Uh, my face was swollen and it was just a lot of soreness and pain once I got it removed. Thank God I didn't have like a dry socket like some people have. And I mean, it healed pretty quick, but there was still this whole process where, it, you know, I had some pain. 
And so I was prescribed some pain meds again or whatever. I didn't really want to take the pain meds. So what I did was I took some Tylenol to help with the pain. But the Tylenol really didn't work. And so I still took the pain meds. And I think I took both of them too close together. And I think that was the worst panic attack I ever had. Because I felt like, once again, that I was losing control. And I was hot. My heart was racing. Now, this was in the wintertime. And I can't you not. I went outside barefoot because I was just that hot. I had to go outside on the front porch in the wintertime just to cool myself down. And not only did I do that, I had to stick my head in the freezer. I had to do several things just to cool myself down. I was finally able to lay down on the couch, calm myself down, and I was like, oh my God. I'm like, yeah, I cannot continue to live this way or to do this because they continued. They wouldn't happen often, uh, but they would continue when I would get really tired or when I would just get frustrated and stressed. So I knew the triggers and when I felt like I was losing control. So I really started noticing that I was suffering from anxiety when I felt like I was losing control. And it really started hitting me when it was just simple things as me getting in a car. And if I was not the person behind the wheel doing the driving. So if I'm on the passenger side or I'm in the back seat, I felt panic attacks happening. Because at that moment, I didn't have control of the wheel. So, one of my biggest triggers was the control thing. Now, it may be different for a lot of other people. Um, social or just anxiety in general can be triggered by so many different factors. It can be triggered from stress and frustration and just being tired and overwhelmed and, you know, lack of, you know, help taking care of yourself. So, anxiety can be triggered in, in so many different ways. But one of my triggers was of course stress, um, was of course when I'm really tired and overwhelmed. But I think my biggest one was control. Uh, I wanted to be in control of you know everything that was going on around me. And the moment I felt like I was losing that control, my anxiety would, would really flare up. And I noticed it just from being in a car. When I'm in the car and I'm not driving the car, I'm on the passenger side. When I should be relaxed that I'm getting chauffeured around or I'm not the person that's doing the driving, I would get really hot. I would get really tense. My heart would start racing because at that moment, it's like my mind was like, you're not doing the driving. You're not in control of this situation. What if something happens? So what I had to do was, was number one, um, I tried several things at first. I'll say it that way. Um, of course, I tried self-help, you know, finding different ways that I thought would really be, you know, good for me, which was reading self-help books, um, was really good for me. Talking to close family and friends that understood even those that probably didn't understand a word that I was saying, but they were just, you know, a good listening ear. They would listen. They would understand. Um, and, you know, one thing about it, I was able to relate to a lot of my close family members and friends as women because some of them were experiencing the same things that I was experiencing. So we could, you know, share our experiences. And I was like, man, I didn't know that this many people so close and surrounded by me were suffering from anxiety so that was really um, helpful for me that I was able to conversate with other ladies that was going through these same experiences so you know conversating with them was a way of helping and improving reading uh, meditating meditation came very later on <laughs> very later on um, I started meditating and um, learning to calm myself down when I feel the the social or the anxiety building up um so tacking it on or controlling it before it would even get started it took me years to get to that point um but the biggest help for me was going to therapy that was the biggest help for me 
Um, because I did not realize I was a con I had to be in control of things. I didn't realize that. I did not realize that until I started going to therapy and my therapist would, you know, we would have these conversations and she was, you know, would ask me or she would even say, are you controlling or do you like to be in control of things? And I'm like, no, I don't think so. And control is different in so many different ways because I'm not like that controlling person where it's extreme. I am not an extreme, you know, control freak at all. But my control is to the point that if I can't control things that I have absolutely no control over anyways. Because who's to say that if I'm driving the car, it's going to be any different than if somebody else is driving. You have no control over what the next driver is going to do regardless. But something as simple as that, I feel like I didn't have control when I was driving. When I would go to the dentist and they would try to give me the gas. I didn't want the gas because I felt then my body, I was losing control. I felt too relaxed. And when I used to, because I no longer feel that way now, thankfully enough, now I can actually relax and be relaxed. But I used to when I would feel like I'm getting relaxed and my body is relaxed, I'm losing control. So I can't focus and control everything that was around me because I can't even react to what's going on with my body right now. Um... And it took years to get over that. Um, and therapy has really been a beneficial factor in my life for helping with anxiety. Um, and I still go to therapy now because I still have anxiety. Um, it doesn't go away overnight. You know, because you do a couple of sessions and, you you know, you learn how to meditate and start doing yoga. And, you know, you started changing your eating habits, which was also really helpful for me. Um, changing my eating habits was also, um, it helped decrease my anxiety as well. So I found different ways to decrease it, but it, you know, it doesn't mean it goes away instantly. Um, but I'm not having the panic attacks anymore. Um, I can actually take pain meds now and I can relax. I can just let my body relax. And I still don't like pain meds and I I'm, still don't take them. You know, unless I really have to. But when I really do have to, I'm able to just let my body relax. And I used, I just go to sleep now. <laughs> I used to could not go to sleep. I would feel my body relax and I would jump out the bed because I didn't want to be relaxed. That is crazy, I know. Who does not want to be relaxed and calm and comfortable and just have a good night's sleep? I didn't. Because even while I was asleep, I guess I still wanted to know everything that was going on to be in control. But now I can take my pain meds or even if I drink a tea now that I know is going to help me go to sleep and help me relax. I can do that now. Melatonin. I can actually take a melatonin now and just let it do what it's supposed to do and relax and go to sleep afterwards. I could not do that years ago. I was not letting the melatonin do what it was supposed to do. I would take a melatonin and still try to be wide awake. And I'm like, that defeats the purpose of even taking it. So, but it takes years. It takes years of finding out what works best for you. Finding out uh, more about your body as well and your mental health. Um, and it, it's, it's not an easy um, process. It's not. And... It shouldn't be. It shouldn't be an easy process because it took you years to get to the point of where you're at, depending on if you suffer from anxiety and what stage of the anxiety that you're at. It took years to get to that point. So it's going to take years to revert it back to how it should be. So it's taken years for me, but um, with therapy, changing my eating habits, making sure that I'm getting more rest, uh, making sure I'm doing self-care as well. And self-care looks different for everybody. For me, self-care is just finding the time to read, find t the time to do some research, or find the time to binge watch something, or, you know, find the time to listen to music, and um, even going shopping, and nails and stuff, man, you know, maybe. Uh, <laughs> I love to get my nails done, but I don't know how much of a self-help that is for me. Because when I go to get my nails done, I'm trying to get in and out. So, But that is self-help for some people. So even just finding, you know, self-care 
the self care that's going to help you. It looks different for everybody. Um, even like for me going to a bookstore, coffee shop, find different coffee shops when I go out of town or just different bookstores and find different books. That's self-care for me. Um, but it looks different for everybody. So find out what self-care works for you and keep doing it. Keep doing it. Consistently do it. Um, massages are also, you know, a good self-care remedy. So just finding the different things that really help you when it pertains to self-care. Know what it is as well. Try different things until you find out, okay, this this is self-care. This works for me. No, this one doesn't work, but this one works. Try different things until you find out what works for you. So go to therapy and do your self-care. Do your meditation. Do your yoga. started doing yoga about a year and a half ago. Um, and I didn't start it doing because it, you know, it was like the, you know how we have these trends and everything looks cool. Um, I'm not usually one of the people that like to follow trends. I'm just not, you know, cause I'm like, it's a trend is, it's good for what a couple weeks and then it disappear. Um, so that wasn't the reason why I started going to yoga. Um, I started going to yoga because I really wanted to learn more, uh, for one, being more flexible with my body and then just figuring out different ways that I can meditate. And so yoga really helped with um, getting me to that point of learning how to meditate more and then learning more about my body, flexibility and relaxation. So that's what it was for me and it, it has helped me as well. Uh, so I started going to yoga sessions and purchasing things that I can do around the house um, to do yoga. And then I started doing like these calming music. Uh, I love music. That may be one of the biggest self-care uh, remedies for me because I love music, all types, all genres of music. And so at night, I would start playing the sleeping music and the calming music and even the meditation music. You can find it on YouTube. You can find it on if you have streaming platforms. I mean, it's all out there. So I started doing this meditation music at night when I would go to bed and it would actually put me to sleep. And then I would have these vivid dreams as well. <laughs> so it's like it was not only putting me to sleep, but it was also boosting my dreams as well. So I started doing the meditation and the calming music at night, even during the daytime if I just want something that's going to be relaxing. So I started doing that. And the teas. I've always liked the tea. But I think in the past year and a half as well, uh, I think teas became a big thing for me with helping with my anxiety and also a part of self-care because I just went on this whole thing of finding every different tea that I could find. Um, and I've always liked tea. I was always like a sweet tea um, drinker, um, like McAllister's. And I still love McAllister's sweet tea. But I was always that type of drinker, um, tea drinker, not necessarily a hot tea drinker, but the cold sweet tea drinker. But in the past year and a half, I started doing different teas um, that also helped with my anxiety. I think in the past year and a half because of COVID and the fact that I had just been in the house uh, working remotely and, you know, just being able to just be in the comfort of my home started doing so many different things so you know COVID definitely had its negative uh, influences and in, in things in our life because we lost so many people and we lost so many things because of COVID but for me there were still positive things that came out of and I think one of the positive things was it really helped me with uh, my anxiety so find the best way for you what's going to fit you that's going to make you improve your anxiety because my remedies and how I go about things it may not be necessarily for you so these are just all suggestions um, and I say try it I say try it and try it all until you find out what's really going to be best for you but I will say that one thing for sure that is going to help is going to be therapy um, get you a licensed professional therapist that is really going to help you with anxiety or any kind of uh, mental issues that you may have going on in your life, no matter how big or how small. Um, and even if you feel like you don't have anything going on, it still doesn't hurt to talk to a therapist. Because there is, as I say all the time, there is still room for improvements in your life. So it still doesn't hurt just to talk to that therapist anyways. 
So make that a number one goal. And then everything else with the meditation and the self-care, and just, just make those um, all branch into or all come together with therapy. But make therapy a number one goal, and then do the other things as well. And bring it all together, just so you can be the best you for this year, and uh, you can be the best for your family, for your friends. But you can't be the best for your family and friends if you're not the best for yourself. Um, so if you are a sufferer, if you do suffer from anxiety, as I do, Find different ways that's going to help you and um, get the help that's needed to improve you um, so you can have a brighter life, a brighter future, a fulfilled life, uh, a meaningful life. Uh, and you will see and feel the change um, as I do now. And it's a progress and it's still a progress, but it has to start somewhere. So let it start with at least you, you know, getting a therapist, um, even if you do it once a month you know, every two, three months. It doesn't matter. Just start somewhere. Um, so just give it a start. Give it a try to make those improvements in your life. Um, to make 2022 also a good year where you're doing other things as well as focusing on your mental health. And as always, this is the Black Educated Tea.